This episode of the Broken Lords podcast is brought to you by Greedy Gorgon Press, who is currently in the last few days of their Kickstarter campaign for Stairway to Heaven. Seven heavy metal celestial boss battles that kill you quick, but level you up even quicker. A link to the Kickstarter is included in our episode details. If you are an independent tabletop game or working within the tabletop RPG space and want your stuff advertised, please shoot us an email at weareallbrokengods at gmail.com. Again, that is weareallbrokengods at gmail.com. Thank you. All right, so first week finishes, and the next two nights are exactly the same. She goes out, she turns into the werewolf, she comes back with something dead. The second night, it's a big deer. Oh, wow. Word up. Okay. The third night, it is only the one fish person, and he's missing an arm and half of his face. Lovely. By the end of the first week, Ricardo can get rid of his one wound. Thank you. And the trauma was also treated, right? Yes. So that can go away. Although, like, it is your personal choice if Ricardo continues to be very uncomfy around water, but the mechanical trauma is gone. I appreciate that. I, I, I Ricardo's not fucking with large bodies of water for a little bit. Just a little bit. Octomer, you can remove one of your treated wounds as, as well by the end of the second week after that third night of the transformation everything goes back to normal okay. by the end of the second week there is a suit of fishman leather armor for Octomer Ooh. Cull has modified his weapon everybody has comfortable grips for their coral knives And another goes away from Octomer, so he should be down to just one. At I this have point. a fact down to one wound. Where do you want to go next? Do you want to look for this strange, magical place to the north? Do you want to go straight to assaulting the sanctuary? What's your goal? I'll ask Nala. Like when you, you know, you mentioned uh, like you know sneaking in there. Did you find your path in? Did you like climb a wall or something? Or did you not even? No, get that far? she was just looking for a window to peek into. Oh, okay. We're going to have to do some maybe preliminary scouting of up north. Yeah. That probably would be what week three is going to be, is us trying to, like, scout the area, see if there's any maybe paths that'll lead on to the sides or any, like, you know, clever ways. Ricardo would be mostly interested in finding places with elevation, if I'm, or, like, you know, maybe that are more vertical than not, if we're going to be dealing with flying critters. Yeah. All right. So by this point... Nala has made a fishman leather skull cap for Cull. It is actually has a fishman skull on it as well. Yeah. But it will basically be the equivalent of a leather helmet. All right, so during the third week, you start doing some preliminary scouting. And how about I get a survival check from one of you and some observation from the rest? I imagine Octomer probably wants to do the survival, uh, right? Yeah, probably. Wants to is a strong term. If anyone beats four focus and 16 target number, I'm willing to see. I'm not, but I am going to spend a fortune point on the observation. <laughs> yes, yeah, To guarantee I see some shit. Aw, oh, heck. Get a big one success from Cole. I'm also going to invest a fortune. Three successes total. Oh, why not? I'll spend a fortune. What could possibly go wrong? One success. Uh... So one success for Phaedra. I got four successes. Four? Hell yeah. On survival. I'm surviving. Yes. That's the pathfinding. That is probably the most important one for this. Yeah. All right. So you guys make your scouting trip. It actually takes, plan carefully, because it actually takes, Nala will tell you, a little over a day to get to the wizard sanctuary. But your initial immediate scouting, you can do out and back in a day. You are able to find the magical thing. The magical thing. 
The magical thing. I love the magical things. There is a circle of standing stones north and a little bit east of the hut, about half a day in one direction. And within those standing stones, there are a bunch of glowing glyphs and runes. As leery as Octomer would be to approach beyond a certain distance, Cull is borderline freaking out. Mm. Because he can feel the magic on his skin at about a hundred yards away. Oh. Oof. Oh, okay. As you all sit and kind of observe, you note that the glowing glyphs seem to move. And in fact, the whole circle itself seems to move. It will not move beyond the boundaries of the standing stones, it would seem. But Cardu is debating the old tried and true method of throw a rock into it and see what happens. But I am a bit scared. <laughs> we're a hundred yards out when we see when we're watching this, right? Yeah. Okay. You're Please? probably like crouched on top of a rock for a little bit of elevation on it, but yeah, there's a little bit of a sink in the land around the big, standing stones. How like would this the size of the standing stones be like like maybe the size of like the pit we found ourselves in or like how big is like the circle? The standing stones are about twice the height of a man and probably probably close to 8 feet wide at the base. Is this, a, is this arranged in a circle or is it just like a bunch of standing stones arranged? The standing like, stones are arranged in a large circle. And right. the glyphs on the inside are also in a circle. Got it. But the but the glyphs are like rotating. The glyphs are moving. They're, They're just rope moving. Okay. Moving and changing, and the circle is moving around inside of the boundary of the standing stones. The entire okay. circle of runes is Got moving it. around inside the boundary, almost like it's trying to escape. So that's pretty cool. That's a word for it. Definitely unsettling to look at, isn't it? Very uncomfortable, yes. Find me something in this valley that isn't uncomfortable to look at. God damn it. Uh, I don't suppose you can make any sense of that, Phaedra. Uh, I mean... I'm going to think about it really hard. <laughs> yes, yes I do. I want to get the hell out of here. Is there a path straight back, or is there a path we can like circle around so you see if we can, like... You can go around if you want to continue northwards more, but... I mean, like, this gives me the sensation of it could get worse if we start messing with it. I don't know why I have that feeling, but I do. And if Cole has the heebie-jeebies... We should probably pack it up. Indeed. Alright, so you guys will go back to the hut for that day. Okay. And if you want to plan an expedition all the way to the borderline of this moorland, like I said, that would require a day one way. Oh, we gotta we gotta rough it then, huh? Alright, let's see if we can gather, like, you know, enough food, get us a couple days worth more worth of rations and go for it. Should we pack a talisman? Oh, you we guys, like, for. especially oh, no. now... I was gonna no, say, espe- especially now that someone has put eyes on the beast, Nala is doubling down that you all need to be wearing them whenever you're not in the hut. We should pack eight, just in case we lose one. <laughs> oh. Nala did mention that the beast went for the fishmen that it saw and dragged five back when they were hunting with you, Octobur. And now... The beast clearly laid eyes on me. Yes, sir. Mm. Uh, uh, We need to get back mm, to the hut by uh, sundown, too. Yes. It's imperative. Special thanks to Toys and Things in Danvers, Massachusetts, Reaper Miniatures, Off the Wall Games in Hadley, Massachusetts, Games and Friends in Springfield, Massachusetts, as well as Triple A Games Arena in Wilbraham, Massachusetts. If you enjoy the show, help the podcast grow. Give us a follow on Twitter at Lords Broken, join the community Discord, and maybe consider offering a small tribute to the old ones on our Ko-Fi. All these links and more can be found in our link tree at linktr.ee forward slash thebrokenlords. Thank you.